Hi, man, John Tron, and welcome to the back of his teardown lab. Today we have the Roberts CR9919, and as you can see, it's a bedside alarm clock radio, just like we used to have back in Dawn days before smartphones. I'm just going to plug it in. Um, the, it does have a weird thing, it does have an MSF world um, radio time setting frequency thing, and I did plug this in a little bit earlier. and. I have to admit, I couldn't get it to come on properly because I think it has to receive that signal before it will come on, unless perhaps you can hold a combination of buttons to make it stop looking for it. But uh, that's all I could do. I was pushing all the buttons, couldn't get the radio to come on, etc., which was a little bit disappointing. But I thought, let's start digging into it, just to have a quick look, because I couldn't really easily open this battery door. So I suspect it's full of some crustaceans. We'll have to get a bit of a spludger here. Let's get that in. Oh, there you go. It did pop. Oh, oh my word. Look at that. Yeah, crustaceans is definitely correct. It has a PP3 9 volt battery that appears to have totally blown its top. You can actually see the top of the battery has come off and there's the snap in there. This could be a little bit of a bugger to get out and hopefully we can get it out without getting all of its dust everywhere. Now we're going to need something a lot firmer than that. How about a little proddy screwdriver? Yep, it's coming. It's a coming. <laughs> I don't think there's any danger of too much charge or residual charge being left in this battery. I'll try to attack it from this end so we don't snap the old snap off. Okay, great. I think we're at a point where probably think about extracting it. Let's turn it that way. Now I've never seen that happen before. That's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> I would normally want to maybe delve a bit deeper into that battery but I suspect it's best we leave it well alone and just lob it straight in the trash. Now part of the battery snap has remained. That could prove difficult. Nope, I don't think it will actually. <laughs> nice and easy. And I don't think there's really much to clean. It's relatively clean inside. <laughs> so that's an absolute bit of luck. <laughs> that's clearly though, the battery that will remember the time and settings once you've managed to get it to work. But let's progress through and have a look deeper into its bowels. So I quite like the idea of getting this radio working because today I was in the car listening to Radio 1 of all things. Yes, the music of the youth. And uh, I thought it was quite good. I was enjoying myself, enjoying myself so much that I eventually found myself with a good friend in a charity shop and they had four CDs for a pound. And I have to admit, I treated myself to a selection of CDs from the 90s. And I think the old 90s was fantastic. And as soon as I got home, I listened to those CDs. And then I went onto YouTube and started listening to the various Vivo albums of things. Again, mainly 90s related. And I totally forgot about bands such as Stone Temple Pilots and I want to say Live, Live Live, but there were some really uh, great ones there. The uh, Cataton Catatonia I was listening to, and of course, loads of red hot chili peppers. You can't beat the old red hot chili peppers. And what amazes me, while it was on the red hot chili peppers uh, playlist, as it were, it went from there sort of old stuff that I remember listening to in the uh, early 2000s in California of all places to their more recent things. And I have to say, Anthony Fidus is absolutely looking amazing. He's like 60 now and he still looks absolutely fantastic. That's what a lot of sun and good living does for you. Unfortunately, here in the UK, we just have misery, especially this time of year. So we've got the cover off and you can see possibly that there's a lot of dust here. So these are like things that we can clean up before we wrap it up like that. There you go. Perfect. And uh, I really want to go a bit further into it, but look at this construction. It is packed in there and it's got the uh, usual look tuning ropes. Looks like dental floss, doesn't it? Pulling all this around here. Let's see if we can extract it a little bit further. So we've done, done some screws on the bottom, which makes this look like a panel. Ooh. And it does appear to be a panel. If you've ever, ever undone a small portable TV, they have similar construction, then you sort of pull everything out of the front. This, I'm not so sure, it does actually have screws on the front. But before we go there, I would like to play with this a little bit more. It looks like this will be the power supply, and indeed it is. I mean, that's clever. They probably had this for different regions. 
Let's see. Oh, ho, ho, ho. There we go. So you've got these weird antennas. So that's probably the antenna for the, uh, you know, you've got the AM, FM and that time signal. And you've got the power supply here. It's protective cardboard. Thermal fuse fitted. Well, we know it works though. We plug it in and it works. But fortunately, you can see most of this volume is actually just a void. So we'll be able to pull this out I think, if we just undo those screws at the front. There's always that danger, don't they, where you go a bit too far, pop it out, never goes back in again. And if you look at the top, I'll show you in a moment, you've got all these buttons here, which of course you've always also got the danger of that all just falling out with it. But I think, looking at the construction, that it's actually bonded to that top board that's placed perpendicular to the screen board. So. We might be okay. Let's keep going. Let's get in there. Got it. Mm, it's thinking about it, although I suspect that volume knob's going to be an issue. So let's see if we can prong it off. Oh, again, two part construction. Very interesting. Very interesting. Road rage, isn't it, boy? Let's get that out there. So now I have a chance of extracting it. So something, uh, you know, with, with that bit of nostalgia, of course, watching all of those old music videos made me really realise that I was uh, in my probably late teens, uh, early 20s around that time, and uh, I am not anymore. And you do get this hit with this, these waves of nostalgia, but also the realisation that... Uh, you know, maybe there's things in your life that you're not going to be able to do anymore. Your chances of becoming an Olympic gymnast are pretty slim. <laughs> right, so that is quite, slightly worrying, I noticed. If you look there on this power supply, there is like a screw with this brownness on it. And I did check, it's not a burn, it's just some rust, probably from that leaky battery area. But you can see these PCBs are absolutely fantastic the way they've been. <laughs> constructed this and I always wonder how do they think in 3D because some of these things would uh, potentially be constructed without the use of, of CAD. I think this one's probably a bit too modern. It probably does have, have a CAD construction but it's just a, a work of art in its own way. So you can see in there there is looking like a bodge capacitor just soldered straight on there and a bit of hot glue. Plenty of hot glue and look at this is weird here you've got like a ribbon cable that connects to the same PCB, so it's coming from one stage to the other. So I wonder if that was the addition of some sort of a module or function in a later one. And this could be the uh, audio, for example, or the power. In fact, let's have a look here at the PCB. It appears, I mean, look, you've got your power, well, what's this going to? Yeah, this is from your power supply. In fact, you've got, what? Hang on. This is your battery power here, which is your battery backup, the red wire and the black one. And then the two yellow, are your power from your transformer, which means, and I know we're not going to be able to see it because I'm not going to dismantle it that much, is that inside here is your rectifier circuit. So it's all being rectified within there. And maybe they're opting to do that in the radio, maybe because it's cheaper, or maybe they want to use that signal, the AC in other ways. I suspect probably not. You've got an IC here, which has been totally sanded down. So they don't want to know, don't want you to know what they've done there. This is your AM and FM switch. There's your tuning uh, capacitor there, right in there. So if you turn that knob, it eventually moves that. And everything else is just to actually do your little LED on the, the dial, which is kind of cute. And that's your, your tuning capacitor in there. There's your AM antenna. What else do we have? That was your volume, wasn't it, on the top? And your various setting buttons. And there are some uh, nomenclature on there. Let's have a look at that in a moment. Uh, what else do we see? We have a light sensitive uh, LDR here, light sensitive resistor, which is used for dimming the screen when it gets dark. And your various switches for the radio modes. I mean, th these are clearly, I think, so, well, I, it's, a, it's a weird one. I'll come to that in a second. Uh, let's have a look here. You've got your 10 millimeter key PCB. And this is a bit odd, isn't it? 106 megahertz, 108.25 megahertz, 1.63 megahertz. Um, I, I, that's, I'm, I'm kind of confused about this. The, obviously, these are the FM ranges, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, some countries have different. Ah, okay. Those actually holes 
for tuning that capacitor underneath. So mm, you have to remember some countries have different uh, band uh, frequencies on their FM band. So I'm wondering if that's to adjust that up and just tune this up. And what I used to be able to do in the olden days when police and other things used to use frequencies outside, like maybe 110, your normal FM radio couldn't get it. But if you went in there and did a little twiddle, you might be able to tune it to do it. A bit naughty, but yeah, you could do that. And you can see these are your snooze buttons, forward, reverse, time. In fact, yeah, it does say forward and reverse on here. So I wonder what forward and reverse does. Hmm. <laughs> That's curious. Let's forward the radio. Um, I'm just looking around though. I can't see any... Um, <laughs> I thought this maybe you click forward and it would like motor it to the next radio station, but no, it's, it's probably to do with just the clock, you know, going up and down when you're setting the time. So it looks to me though, when you see the circuit here, that it's primarily an analog receiver circuitry, right? So there's, it's, it's probably doing all of that analog. So that means that this chip on here is probably uh, just used for controlling the clock functions and oh of course it's not just the clock functions it's the radio receiver isn't it to receive that uh, radio time signal so that's why it's got that in there because you wouldn't need such a big thing uh, just to work on setting the clock you could do it with a tiny little pick but you can see there's a few extra more pins a bit more gubbins there it's so probably a little mini kind of system on chip type thing that just does that for them but apart from that, yeah, it's uh, probably very good. I mean, I've always had uh, pretty good experiences when it comes to radios that just use analog circuitry for FM. I mean, you can get brilliant, brilliant sounding radios that way and sound fantastic. Um, and then you can get digital radios that absolutely suck. They suck in their functionality and they just have like up, down, you know, where they cycle through looking for the signal. I mean, that seems neat, but really it's no hardship, is it? Turning an FM knob, you'll do it much faster than just going through the whole range by just turning a knob and tuning it into what you want. So I think this is, this is cool. I, um, I think this is a radio that I'll definitely be cleaning up when I reassemble it. There's a bit of rust inside. And I can see a little bit of dust has got on the inside of that. So I'm not going to be uh, hasty in just whacking it together just for the, the sake of this video. I'm going to take a little bit of time here. I do like this, actually. That's like got an output on it. Let's see if that's a line out or it's a headphone output on the back. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Look how they've done it, though. It's like a little daughter board on there. I'm not quite sure why they hadn't made it onto the main board, but perhaps they uh, use it for something else. In fact, there is a model number on there. It does say on the board, if you just see or zoom in, have a look there. It says model 399i MSF2B, and then two band FM AM radio PCB. And I don't think that uh, matches up with any number here on the Roberts radio case. So it's probably just generic. I wonder if they made several boards. In fact, I'm just looking, do you see the word Roberts on any of this? Not really. Um, so I don't know who owns Roberts now. Clearly, clearly a Far East brand, but uh, yeah. So there you go. That's a bit of interest, wasn't it? Hopefully uh, that was of some interest for you. Please leave a comment down below. And of course, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Whoop. For watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>